In this video, we're going to be showing you how to connect your iPad or iPhone to OBS using the cable that came with it. So let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. Link is in the description. So I get asked this a lot of how to connect your iPhone and iPad to OBS so that you can have like a secondary camera or you just, a hey, money might be tight and you have access to a plethora of iPhones and iPads. And we already talked about how you can use the NDI HX Capture app that used to be free, but now it's $9.99 again. Um, and hey, is there any other option, specifically one that does not require wireless and you can use the cable that came with your iPad or iPhone to have a secure connection. Well, I think we found something like that. On the App Store, there is actually the camera for OBS Studio. And as it says, this app is available only on the App Store on the iPhone and iPad, but I have a link in the description so that you can see it. And I actually purchased this. So we're gonna see how this whole thing works. Now, I'm going to pull up OBS on my computer here. Now, you do need to download um, the plugin that will work in OBS. So let's go ahead and cut back over to the computer. Now, this app actually will let you do NDI as well, which I didn't realize. So we're going to test out both of those. So for the best possible experience, make sure your device is listed here. All right. And there should be an download here somewhere. Oh, and by the way, this is $15.99, which I think is interesting. But hey, if it solves our issue, then that will work. All right, so we need to go to the OBS Studio plugin on their website. It would be nice if they had a direct link to it, but we can go to this link here and pull that up. All right, let's go look for the plugin. Look for the, there it is, USB, and it has NDI. So like I said, we're gonna test out both of these. Let's go ahead and download this. This is for the Mac, which I will test this out on the Ryzen Tosh 2. Let's go ahead and download the Windows one. Now make sure when you do this, OBS is closed before you run this. I'm going to go ahead and agree to that and install. That was quick. All right, let's go ahead and open up OBS now. All right, so we got our stuff here. Let's go ahead and jump into our stuff here. Has to do an update. And we're not trying to do that right now. Remind me later. Now, I already have this installed. And that is the OBS camera right there. All right, so we got this here. We're waiting for USB connection. Let's go ahead and connect this. All right, so we're all connected. Let's allow. And maybe I should use the other camera. I have it looking up at my <laughs> Ada imaging camera right there. So now let's cut back over to the computer and let's see what's available. So let's go to our sources here. And we have a new option here, the iOS camera. Let's go ahead and click on that. All right, so now we're gonna search for the device. Let's refresh. Still not seeing nothing, hmm. Reconnect device. Well, let's actually, let's cut back over here because it's actually saying here at the bottom, um, waiting for a connection, tap for more. Let's go ahead and tap down here. We're, okay, we're connected. So I don't know, connection guide. 
if you're having trouble with the OBS USB plug-in, um, I've written some helpful tips. All right, we'll come back to that. I mean, it is connected. All right, so going back to this, the guide here, it's saying that if you have problems, first verify that you have iTunes and install. And I do have iTunes installed. As you can see over here, yes, we have new software. I will download that later. Hopefully that's not the cause of this. So we see that showing up. So that's not an issue. And of course it's asking for all these updates. Let's refresh again. And I guess it needed to do something with um, iTunes, but it's showing up now. So let's go back to our software, connect there, and there we go. I mean, it, it was kind of a, a little bit of a hassle. And there we go. So let's go ahead and see what is the doesn't let me change what my resolution is. So I don't even know what it's saying here. The good thing is it is not showing any of my settings on here. So if I try to fill this out, let's transform, let's fit the screen. Fitting to screen gives us everything and it's set defaultly to pull in my mic, which I don't necessarily want for that. Um, and there's no option to turn that off. I guess you would have to just mute the mic if you were using this as a secondary camera. Now, the good thing with this is it is a lot um, more responsive because everything is being pulled over the cable instead of it going over NDI. Now, this plugin is supposedly does work with NDI as well. So let's go ahead and test that out as well too. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to our settings in the device and output. We have OBS set. We're going to go to NDI and done. Now over here on the computer, it has stopped responding. So now what we're gonna do is come over here to the plus, let's go to our NDI source, which requires you to have the NDI plugin and everything installed in here already, which I have. Let's do NDI source and my iPad shows up. And let's okay. And there we go. Now, doesn't look like to have a lot of lag. Well, I can tell it's a little bit of lag in here, so. So, I mean, that's cool. And now I don't have an iPhone, so I can't test with the iPhone. I just have an iPad. But the fact that this is going over NDI, and I mean, I guess the fact if you have to pay for this is $15.99. The NDI um, app by itself, I got it when it was free, but that one is $9.99. That is cheaper, but at least on this, once you have iTunes and open it up, I guess iTunes has to do whatever verification. I think mainly the issue that I messed up on, I didn't get that trust box that pops up on the iPad. Maybe that's what was stopping it, blocking it from coming in, because once that came up, that's the only thing that really popped up. It showed up here on OBS. So I guess this app is good because at $15.99, you have two methods. You can connect it over the cable or you can connect it over NDI. And they seem to both work well. Me personally, I would go with the cable more because of just its stability and you're not requiring Wi-Fi. Now I'm here in my apartment, so there's nothing else on the device, I mean on the Wi-Fi except for my stuff so I can control that. Would I do this in a church? No. Um, I would personally, now let me take that back. I would put this and use it just as a secondary shot, like I've said before with NDI without my face. But this is mainly a review of doing this over the cable. So I'm gonna switch this back over to the cable. Let's go ahead and stop this and let's turn on the camera with just the cable here. We're still connected. Let's okay. 
and it says it's waiting for a connection. So let's unplug the cable here, plug it right back up. And there we go. I guess we had to un turn it to none and then do it back and now we're here. So like I said, this is working good with the app. Um, now I'm, not, I'm gonna leave all that stuff in um, of how it was giving me some problems connecting because I wanna be honest with y'all so that if you run into any issues, you're seeing the same issues that I'm going through with this. So like I said, I mean, that is another option, especially the cable is gonna give you a lot better performance because it's not gonna be, because it's not gonna be hindered by your Wi-Fi. And unless somebody knocks the cable loose, you should not have any issue and you'll be able to get way better quality coming over the cable than you would using the, um, than using your Wi-Fi there. But again, the fact that you do have it you could do NDI and have a secondary source and place that as second, excuse me, as secondary shots. And I think that would work as well for you too. So again, link is in the description um, on how you can get this to work um, and where you can actually purchase it from. I'm looking at it right now and it is the 22nd of August, 2020, and it is going for $15.99. I did pay for this with my own money. So um, <laughs> just being all honest with you, it was a little problematic. I wish they had better links calling out exactly where to download the stuff instead of just like go to our website and I had to pull the link from their um, FAQ. It should have been a call out link directly to the downloads when you purchase it, which I did not get. Um, that's a little, um, they could use better by just having a link directly to say, hey, thanks for purchasing. Make sure you download the plugin here. That would help. Um, and I think this will work well because it's a wired connection. So um, I think that's about it. Like I said, link is in the description for everything of where you can get. And I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Just didn't like the setup initially. But make sure if you're on Windows, and again, I would try this on the Ryzen Tosh later. Um, make sure that you open up iTunes and you get that trust this computer um, type of message. And then I think everything will work fine for you. So. If you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. And I wanna thank the patrons for making this video possible. Their names are on the screen right now. And you can become a patron too for as little as $1 a month where you help us train media ministries all over the world. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next video later.